is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And I am excited today to talk about referrals because I'm a big believer in doing more with what you have. And referrals is taking those relationships that you already have and making the most of them. And I'm excited to have Edwin Dearborn with us today because he talks about referology and I talk about focusology. So we're in the ology group together. He's been a featured entrepreneur in social media today, the Orange County Register and other national media outlets. And he was formerly educated in marketing and public relations in Hollywood, California. I guess that would be a good place to get that training in the 1990s. And he's since coached thousands of CEOs and business leaders all around the world. He's an author of Power Branding Secrets and Three Degrees of Separation. And of course, that tech, that term that I just referred to before as referology. So Edwin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Penny. Thanks for having me pleasure. Tell us what was it like being in Hollywood in those years and being in that marketing and promotional space? Promotional space in Hollywood is, I mean, there's so much content being created even still today. Uh, It was obviously different in the nineties, but you had writers and film producers at so many different levels, not only the movies that you see, but also just corporate level of content creation is also occurring in Hollywood. And I think Forbes magazine a number of years ago called Hollywood the content marketing capital of the world. Right. That's kind of why I was like, what, you know, what was that like? Right. It absolutely. I could, I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's extremely competitive, but there's a lot of old school stuff that really, really works that, you know, you think, well, the tools change, the technology changes, But still, the psychology of marketing and PR is the same, which is how do we win people over to an idea? How do we get people excited about consuming a piece of content, whether it's your blog post, whether it's a movie? And I think Hollywood is obviously going through a revision of the last few years due to a number of factors, one of them being they've got big competitors. They've got Netflix and they have YouTube and they have TikTok and influencers are the new movie stars. That's right. The principles are timeless. And I think that's really what I was able to see is that no matter what you're promoting at what scale, whether you're a local business with your iPhone making little videos on TikTok or whether you're making feature films, it's all about how do I engage an audience? How do I get people to want to consume and talk about my product? Awesome. So I want to want to gear that towards what we're going to talk about today, which is around referrals. Yeah. Right? So it's like, I think it's the easiest way to grow your business, Yeah. but people aren't doing it. I know. I like, know. Whoa. That just blows my mind. Like, Oh, I don't want to bother people. Are they going to think that I'm selling or begging. I'm pushy? I'm begging, I'm desperate, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, all of those things come around or they're just, they just don't have proper system. They ask once and then, or they don't ask right. Before we talk about that, though, what makes you passionate about this? I mean, you wrote a book about it. Why are you so passionate about that? I think during the lockdown, you know, I live in Las Vegas and we live on conventions. You know, people think it's about gambling that brings people to Vegas, but really what brings the most people to Vegas is conventions, business. Yeah. So for a matter of, you know, a half a year or so, we weren't doing that. We weren't meeting in person. So I took a look at it and go, well, I can't use that anymore to market. And I kind of came full circle to like, well, what's left? And what was left is, what do I tap into my database? How do I leverage my connections on social media? How do I get other people talking about me at scale? 
you know, I, I did a deep dive. I started reading books on the subject. I went to Amazon and I typed in best books on referrals. I ordered them. I started reading them. I learned a lot of things, reaffirmed a lot of things I already knew. But I think in the book, what I discuss is what I call the biggest blind spot in marketing. Ooh. And it's, Ooh. I want to tell you biggest what the biggest blind spot in marketing. I just want to give some, I don't have any music to put on, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, some Darth Vader music or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So well, let what me is tell you what the blind spot is, is that people do not believe that referring is a proactive strategy. They think that, well, if I'm just good, you know, the referral should come. And there is some truth in that. Like, you've got to be referable. If you're a restaurant, you got to serve great food. It's got to be at the temperature it should be, and it should be delivered friendly, you know, in a friendly manner. But does that guarantee that people are going to talk about you? And the, and the answer is no. When I ask people, do you love referrals? Everybody gets excited. I've never heard anybody, if I called you up and said, hey, Penny, I have a referral for you. You wouldn't be going, oh, man. Oh, I hate I that. I hate referrals. <laughs> So the tonality about referrals is very high. Commonly, everybody loves referrals. Right. But then you ask, well, how do you generate them in a proactive manner? That's where the blind spot is. In my research and in my reading, I realized that there's actually four different types of referrals. And each one has a sub-strategy to get more of those types of referrals. So... First of all, there's not all referrals are the same as referrals. Right. There's different types of them. And then in each type, there's different ways to instigate them. And it doesn't mean that when you instigate these actions that the referral will happen that day. But like anything else, if you keep doing the principles, you eventually get, you know, the apple will eventually grow on the tree if you keep planting seeds and nurturing the tree. Right. So what are the four types? Help us just to get an overview. First one is what I call a soft referral. This is where somebody gives you a review on Yelp or Google My Business or tags you on a post in social media and talks about you. They're not referring people directly to you. Like, here's my brother, help him. What they are is they're speaking about you. kindly of you. And you and I know that any business that accumulates lots of reviews and lots of people tagging you on social media over and over and over, it has a cumulative effect and it ends up referring people. When I moved to Vegas five years ago, how did I find my favorite restaurants? I went to Yelp and I went, well, they've got a thousand positive reviews. So I'll try, I'll check it out. Those thousand people referred me in a soft way. One of the ways that we can get more referrals is, and I've done this many times with practices and businesses, is I go, when you have a great experience, ask people, you know, did you like our service here? How did we do? And if they say something positive, we just ask them, would you be willing to say that online? Now, imagine if every time we served good food or we gave great dental service or great bookkeeping service, people go, my gosh, you guys are incredible. Would you mind saying that online? Then get their email address, which is another aspect of growing your referrals, and email them the link to that and go, hey, you remember you said you said those kind words. Can you do that? I did that with a dental practice, and we grew from 50 re online reviews to 175 in less than a year That's just cool. by implementing that policy. And guess what happened when they started getting more reviews on Google and Yelp? The phone calls started to come in yep. more often. I found you on Google. Have to ask. People have to ask. So right. that's the first thing that we have to get over is it's okay to ask. And it's okay to ask for that win or that success story and then document that success story where other people are looking for that type of content, that user-generated content. Moreover, right. you got your email, send out good content every week. That makes you referable. I can't tell you how many times I've had people call me going, I get your emails. I don't read them all, but you're in my email every week. And I was thinking about doing some marketing. I was thinking about what you do. And now I want to engage or my brother, I've gotten some great referrals from my email database going, I love your stuff. I forwarded it to a good friend. He's going to reach out to you. Right. So stay in front of your past leads, stay in past 
in front of your past clientele. So I want to add something here that I've found is really important is, you know, timing is also everything. If somebody says to you, wow, this was a great meal and you're at a restaurant, right? Then, you know, to be able to ask right then they're in the referral, what I call referral state of mind, right? They're in that referral state. So, you know, get them while they're hot and say, well, you know, I'd, Like you said, you know, would you be able to do that, whether you capture their email, whether you give them a QR code so they can go right to it? You know, there's so many different ways to make it easy for them. But but you have to also you have to ask at the right time and you have to make it easy for them. Right. Yeah. And you have to make it a policy of of your business. Like, you know, we go to dental offices or bookkeeping offices or whoever we work with. It's like, okay, now this is part of your duty. Front office girl, when they come out, you're going to ask. This is now part of, it's not just something you do when you remember it. No, this is now part of your job task. You are now part of the marketing team. We're going to ask you and we're going to require of you that if you can generate two positive reviews every week, well, the cumulative effect in a year is going to be massive. Right. I mean, I have one client in Santa Ana, California, and we kept getting more and more reviews after two years. We looked, took all the business we got from Yelp. Each review was worth $5,000 in annual business. Yeah. We just took the amount of money she made from Yelp, divided by the number of positive reviews, and every review had a cumulative effect of $5,000 in new revenue. That's a soft referral. Number two, I call the direct referral. And this is why the email list and getting people to follow you is so important. The direct referral is, Hey, Penny, I know a great restaurant here in Las Vegas. Let's go to that restaurant. I'm going to take you there. How does that restaurant or any business get me to talk about you directly? The key is to stay in front of your leads. This is why a CRM is so important. This is why posting content on social media is important. You just got to stay top of mind. So when somebody goes, man, I wish it was a good restaurant, you're like... Oh, I know one. So you've got to stay top of mind. I did this with a coffee shop where, you know, they were busy in the morning. I mean, it was lying out the door. And at lunchtime, there was hardly anybody there. So I told the owner, I said, look, they just think of you as the coffee place. But most people don't go to lunch alone. They usually bring a friend with them. So what we're going to do is over the coming months, we ask them for their email by giving them a 10% discount on their three to four dollar coffee. Then around 1130, we emailed them the lunch special of the day, which is not a $4 coffee. It's more like a $15 to $18 salad and sandwich. Right. More money. Guess what? People started coming in and going, oh, it's also a lunch place. Hey, you want to go to lunch with me? And guess what happened? Not only did we get the customer that already loves the coffee shop to come back, but now is bringing their friends out to lunch. Text is a great way to do that too, right? Uh, Texting, email. Numbers, absolutely. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram. And if you just keep communicating good content, funny content, whatever content makes sense to you, you've got to stay in front of your database. There was a study done on why people leave one brand to go to another brand. They go from brand A to brand B. Why did they make the move? And the study found that brand A was indifferent to their past clientele, and they just were out of sight. So they decided to choose B, not because they were upset with brand A, they just forgot about brand A, and they moved to another brand. So just because they buy from you once, doesn't mean they're going to buy from you again or refer to you. You've got to stay in front of your database, your followers, and your past clients. This is why a CRM and automating your social media to your database is so critical. And there's Great tools to do that with. So that's number two. Number give us, three. Give us a quick tool because people like tools here. So just. Yeah, you, you've tool. got, you've got, a, you know, there's so many different CRM, Salesforce, Zoho. There's also, you can automate your social media sharing with Sendable or there's so many of these social media. Right. You can Hootsuite. reprogram your right. content and your tweets and your posts so that you don't, oh, I forgot to post something. Right. It can, it can be posted automatically. Perfect. Yeah. Right. And you so, can even get a virtual assistant to, you know, Hey, you manage my social media, make sure my content's getting reshared over and over and over. Absolutely. And number three is working with influencers. 
5% of your database, 5% of your followers are influencers. So I think a study was done that 90% of the content is created by 5% of the people online. Find those five people and figure out how you can work with them. The best way I found is, hey, are you active on social media? And if they're really active on social media, they're going to tell you how active they are on social media. And then you come up with bright ideas of how to collaborate with influencers. They have a large impact on business. There's so many different studies on that. Influencers, I didn't know you were going to mention that. And that's a unique look at referrals, right? Mm -hmm. People aren't necessarily talking about that. What's the best way to, let's say they're on your list, but you don't know that they're influencers, right? You don't know details about your list. So how do you identify them? And how do you get them to, you know, being proactive, how do you get them to, to take that action for you? So there's a couple of ways. Number one is when you're engaging them with them on, in person or you're engaging with them on social media, you'll find that certain people will engage you more often. So all of a sudden you say, man, this guy's leaving a lot of comments. You go check out their LinkedIn profile. Wow, he's got 28,000 followers. He's active on social media. Mm-hmm. He's engaged. I wonder how I could maybe work. Maybe I could interview him on my podcast. Maybe we could co-write a blog post. You know, you just have to get bright on what would make sense to work with that individual. This is where I find a lot of guests from my own podcast. Who's engaging with me? Who's got large followers? And all of a sudden... I've got now guests and I create a podcast with them and now they're sharing it to their 28,000 followers. Hence, you know, like, why are you getting more followers? Because I'm working with influencers. Right. It can go to the next step, which is four, which is now I've got a formal co-branding relationship. That's what I call, you have a co-brand referral, meaning Coca-Cola, the official drink of the NFL. You've got two powerhouses working together, mentioning each other's brands. But you don't have to be a Fortune 500 company to have this partnership marketing opportunity. You could be a florist and have partnership marketing opportunities with hotels and churches and synagogues for weddings or funerals. There's ways to create these synergenic official partnerships. I work with a bookkeeping company you know, where they're their official bookkeeping resource for some consulting groups who go out and consult doctors. So they see a doctor with financial problems. They're like, we've got a good bookkeeper. They're our official bookkeeper. Partnerships so, are huge. I think huge. I don't know why people don't, because it's all about leverage, right? Referrals are about leverage and yeah. partnerships are leverage, right? I mean, it's obviously it's part of a referral, but you're tapping into someone else's workforce so that they become your workforce, right? That's so powerful. Yeah. And you can package your services together. You can, I mean, this is, can get really creative. This is obviously kind of at a higher strategic level than most small businesses think about, but nonetheless. But that's working smarter and they they absolutely would benefit and go a lot further faster with stepping back and looking at strategic partnerships through, you know, maybe little partnerships that aren't really partnerships. Exactly. Now imagine you take any business that's doing fairly well. And all of a sudden now you take referral source, number one, soft referrals, and you get another hundred to 200 reviews per year. Number two, you really work your CRM, texting, email, phone calling, staying in front of your database seeing how you can serve them. Obviously, you're going to get more referrals that way. Number three, you identify influencers. You work with them, even if it's just one a week, one different one a week in some way. They tag you on Facebook. They talk about you on TikTok, whatever they're into. And number four, you develop a handful of strategic partnerships, just two or three a year. Over a number of five to 10 years, if you kept doing all that, what would happen to your brand? You'd have referrals just come, oh, I've heard about you. I've seen people tag you on social media. I've seen your reviews. I saw you on a podcast with this other guest. See, that's the modern word of mouth. I'm all about leverage. And as I said, you know, doing more with what you have. There's so much that we are sitting on that in the pandemic, even in general, right? There's this, the bias to go for the new thing, to go for the new client, to, you know, put all of our resources, our energy and our money looking for that new client that we've got no connection to, 
why not look at the existing base that we have? I, I forget the percentages uh, off the top of my head, but the percentages of people who come from referrals that close, they close like 50% more and yeah. faster than and they spend more and they spend more. Right. So it's like, well, duh, you know, it just is logical to spend more time and energy with that as a core strategy. So 2022, you guys are listening out there, you're entrepreneurs, you're running your business, you're in sales. This is a core strategy that you want to look at as to how you can grow your business by looking at your existing customer base, your existing network. Uh, and that is going to be a, a huge benefit for you when you just take it deeper, right? Is we just, we're so surface level in so many different areas. And so if we just take it, take the one strategy and go deeper versus having five or six or seven or eight, right? That people are doing and spreading themselves too thin, just go deeper into this one. Yeah. The money's in the list. If you have a database and you have a set of followers in there are opportunities. So what's your definition of productivity and why? Productivity is achieving the maximum amount of output with the least amount of stress and inefficiency. Because productivity, you can be productive, but exhausted and stressed out. And then do you, do you feel productive? Right. Oh, I did a lot. Yeah. But you're, you know, you don't look healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. Too many you know, people. And that's why burnout is a huge issue right now is they might be super productive, you know, at what cost? And then of course, it's not a consistent productivity. It's like productive and then crash, right? And then, oh, got to get back to it productive and then crash. That's not productive at all. That's just, you know, that's just insanity. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's That's a mania, you know, that's- uh, Good point. That is total mania. It's we just, are, yeah, yeah. Woo! And now you're depressed and up again, down again. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, neuro, it's neurosis to me. So productivity is you have sustainability with efficiency. You know, our time goes so fast far yeah. of show. And to the what end, didn't I ask you that you feel is important for the listeners to hear or to know? This is a topic worth studying, not just my book, which you can get for free, Referology, and, uh, and just go to brandedshareables.com. That's brandedshareables.com. And there's a link there, Referology. You download the book. It's absolutely free. I also mentioned several other books in my ebook. So I believe that if you spend time, you know, we get what we focus on. Why not focus on referrals? What a great way to grow your business. And if you study about it and you focus on it, I guarantee you over time, if you take the small actions on a daily basis, over time, these will come to fruition as referrals. Absolutely. So what are, just to give people some things that they could, some key performance indicators that they could set for this year to make referrals one of their focuses, what would two or three of those uh, key performance indicators around referrals be? How many positive reviews are you getting? That's very measurable. Did we get two this week? Did we get none this week? So set that, a number, so, right? Set a number a, to say. That's set a know. number. Let's get two. Right. And over a year, we'll get 104 positive reviews on Google and Yelp. Great. How big is our email database? Are we growing? Our, do we have an email database? Right. You know, so either decide we have, to set one or <laughs> wherever your list is, double it. Double right? your list. Set Grow that, your list, right? Double your impact. Number three, how many inter, one of the key KPIs that we keep in our bookkeeping business is how many introductions did we get from our existing clientele? We want four, we have over 100 clients, and our goal is to be introduced. That we don't call it a referral, we just call it an introduction. Just, hey, here's my brother, he's got a business. Why don't you talk to him? If we know that if we can get four introductions per week, we will probably close two of them. So that's okay. Just introduce me to somebody right. Just at a party, online, in person, through a Zoom call, whatever. Just introduce me. Right. And immediately, right, you do that. You set a number, 50% of those close, right, from, from an average. You've just doubled your business. You just doubled your business. Bam. And, and you, you know, and all you do is say, hey, I know you know some people. Is there somebody you could introduce me to that's a business owner? Yeah, I know this guy. Good. If you could introduce me, I'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, awesome. I'm sure we could dive deeper, but 
I like that you're giving people that to think about. And, and most importantly, the biggest takeaway is to know the difference between the different types of referral systems and to set a process for each one of those, a, a goal of what you're going to go after, and then the steps that it's going to take to, to execute it. Absolutely. Anything else that you wanted to share before we close out today? No, just again, get my free book. And last thing is thank you, Penny, for having me. You're an awesome podcaster. And I enjoy doing this for the community, the business community, helping them grow. I've been a small business owner for a long time. My parents were small business owners, so it's in my blood. And I love giving back to the community. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for being here and listening. And really, you know, it is so valuable. Some of these strategies that you can put in place to leverage what you already have, the network, the people that you already do business with. So guaranteed you're not doing as much as you could do. And so make that a focus for 2022 to simply double your business. It is possible to double your business with the existing network and existing client base that you have. Make that a goal and then set forth the key performance indicators to make that happen. And week after week, track it and follow up and make sure that that's part of your process. So my name is Penny Zanker and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time. <laughs>